the Greco-Roman period didn't ride donkeys. They rode stallions, steeds. Y'all in here now? So for Zachariah to write that, it almost seemed like, oh, that's out of date. That's out of context. It don't really fit. I don't see how this could happen. If they really are a king, why are they riding a donkey? Right, right. Are y'all in here now? Yeah. But when Jesus sees the crowd uh -huh. and he hears what they're singing, he says, now I got to fulfill the next prophecy. Right. Somebody bring me a donkey. Yeah. 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 Are y'all in here? Yeah. And when he finds a donkey, uh -huh. he sits on it. Now, why is this critical? It's critical because kings, as I mentioned earlier, they would only ride their stallions and steeds, Big John, when they were riding into victory. In other words, when they came home from the battle, the city would be waiting to praise them for what they did. Then they would mount the steeds and they would come in. Stay with me. Jesus had just whooped death in Bethany around the way. It was a foreshadow of him whooping death seven days later. Yeah, yeah. So he was giving them a taste of the victory right, right. that was to come, except he wouldn't ride a steed. Uh -huh. he come lowly. lowly. Right. he come humble. Y'all yeah, yeah. in here? Yeah. I know I'm talking to, you know, a different generation. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't come in the Benz or the Lexus. Yeah, yeah. He came in the Pinto. Y'all yeah. yeah. in here now? Yeah. It wasn't like he could afford, he could afford a style, you know, are you with me? He's the king of glory, but he came in humility. That's what I want you to know. He was a humble king, and he was riding in to fulfill prophecy as the servant king born in a manger, not in a palace. He was a rich king, but he chose to live in poverty. He was the righteous king, but he came to serve, not to be served. Here it is, here it is. Jesus here, it begins to receive honor and praise for two reasons, daughter Trina. Number one, he receives praise because he was truly their king. Secondly, he gets praise because the Bible has said they were going to do it. Most kings made you bow down. Are you in here now? Jesus doesn't make anybody bow down. Not yet. Are y'all in here? Oh, when you going to bow one day. You're going to be made to bow. But for those who love and worship him, they bow, Mother Ross, because they were glad to see him. They bowed because they were proud to be in his presence. They bowed because they were motivated by the word and motivated by the demonstration of his power to worship him. Is there anybody here today ever had the word to move you to worship? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got one amen. Yeah. Sister Green, my only amen. Yeah. Is there anybody here say, Pastor, I like music, but they don't take it? It don't take all of that. I can worship because the word yeah. makes me want to worship. Yeah. Can I say it again? Yeah. They worship God because of the fulfillment of the scripture. Uh -huh. It was the word uh -huh. that gave them a reason to praise him. Oh, yeah. It was the word, the word that caused them to want to bow down with palm branches. Uh -huh. I need a Bible reader in here. It was the word yeah. that made them want to give God praise. Yeah. Now, if you don't know the word, you ain't going to know how to worship. But I can get happy by myself when I just read the word. Yeah. Good God Almighty. I don't know about you, but I wish Fresno would get arrested by the word. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I wish North America would get arrested by the word. I wish the believers again will return to worship of the word. Yeah. Can I talk to you right there? I said it's more about the word than the piano and the keyboard. Yeah. It's the word yeah. that ought to draw you to worship. That's, right. That's why when you sing a cappella and you really know him, you don't need no music. Because the word, the word 
will draw you to worship him. Yes, it will. I like this, and the text goes on to say, Darren called that the disciples didn't understand the, these things. Mm -hmm. What things? They didn't understand why the crowd mm -hmm. was bowing like that and, and singing like that until mm -hmm. he was glorified. Yes. Seven days later, yes. when he raises from the dead, yes. they're like, ah, oh, I get it now. I understand now. The scripture became fulfilled yeah. after he rose from the dead. Yeah. After they remembered the word. Yeah. After yeah. he was crucified, right. buried, uh -huh. and rose again. Yeah. They remembered. Yeah. After, after he lived and died sacrificially, uh -huh. they remembered the word. Uh -huh. After they saw his sacrifice. They understood. That's why the multitude say, well, we've looked at the singing of the people. We've looked at the saying of the prophet. Let me get you out the sun when I tell you about the saying of the Pharisees. The Bible says in this last verse, Reverend McBee, that the Pharisees, when they saw all of this, they said among themselves, these are those special haters that don't like nothing Jesus does. They say, you see what y'all have done? Uh -huh. They turn on each other. They're arguing now. Y'all ain't accomplished nothing. Uh -huh. Now look, they said, all the world is praising him. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yeah, right. They got mad, Lisa, when they saw the crowd worshiping Jesus coming into the Passover celebration. Now why is this important? It's important because the writer of John's gospel want you to see not only were they angry that he raised Lazarus from the dead but they were angry now that they got introduced to new worshipers what do you mean people who saw Lazarus were now worshiping and these haters became so angry that they wanted to stop worship but they couldn't I need to unpack something here. Can I give you, can you give me two minutes? I want you to know something right here, that wherever there is true worship, there is always contempt. Come on, lean in here. Lean in here. When heaven was worshiping God before the creation of man, contempt happened with Lucifer and the fallen angels. Wherever there's true worship, there's always contempt. Can I say some more? Somebody got an attitude right now because worship is happening in the parking lot. Somebody mad right now? They said, we told them they can't meet in their churches and they still meet. Contempt. Are y'all with me here? We told them they got to wear a mask and they still singing. We <laughs> there's contempt. Why? Because where there's true worship, there's always going to be contempt. Yeah. I wish I could go on. Let me get out of here. I promise I'll get you out of the sun. Listen, let me tell you something. The worship of the people of God, it caused discouragement and despair and anger to rise in the Pharisees. And they became outraged by the people's worship. And they began to say, now the whole world, BJ, is gone after them. Enemies of Jesus, guess what? They can't stand in Montre when his people worship his name. The enemies of Jesus can't stand it when we have a no matter what type of praise. The enemies can't stand it. When we say, I don't care what you think about me, I've come praising. Huh. The enemies of Christ, they get baffled at the worship of the saints' tongue because in worship, there's liberation. Right, right, right. Yeah. In worship, there's freedom. Yes, it is. Dad Jameson, in worship, there's grace. Yeah, yeah. That's why we can't wait to get to the parking lot. Yeah. You ever seen anybody in a rush to get to the parking yeah. lot? No, no, but why? It ain't what you do in the parking lot. Uh, 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 it ain't where you're at. Come on, it's what you do when you get here. Yeah. 
and the Pharisees were outraged because they saw these people running to the edge of town trying to get their place in the line with the palm branches just trying to get a look at the one who raised somebody from the dead. They weren't running like that to get to the temple, Mario. They weren't running like that to get to the synagogue but they was running Tina, to get to see Jesus yeah. well I got to leave you now I thank God for you new beginnings I thank God that you are parking lot worshipers I thank God that you can see in the distance Easter's coming and pastor said I gotta get my palm branch I gotta get my chair because when he rides into the service, yeah. he got to hear me praising. Y'all yeah. catch it right there? Yeah. Dr. S.M. Lockridge, famous sermon on the triumphal entry. He said something powerful. He says, the church can worship him today because he's still a king. Y'all yeah. with me here? Yeah. He wasn't just a king for that service. No, no. He's the king of glory. Yeah. He's the king of all kings. Yeah. And as my king, he's the key of knowledge. Yeah. As my king, he's the wellspring of wisdom. As my king, he's the doorway to deliverance. As my king, a peace. As my king, he's the roadway of righteousness. As my king, he's the highway of holiness. Yeah. As my king, yeah. he's the gateway of glory. Yeah. As my king, he's the master of the mighty. Yes, he is. As my king, yeah. he's the captain of the conquerors. Yeah. As my king, he's the head of the heroes. Yeah. As my king, yes, he's the king of the church. Yeah. As my king, yeah. he's the king of the body of Christ. Yeah. As my king, his goodness is limitless. Yeah. As my king, yeah. his mercy is everlasting. Yes, is. As my king, yeah. his love never changes. Yeah. As my king, yeah. his word is enough. Yes, is. As my king, his reign is righteous. Yeah. As my king, my king, his yoke is easy yeah. and his burden is light. Yeah. As my king, he's indescribable. Yeah. He's incomprehensible. Yeah. He's invincible. Yeah. He's irresistible. Yeah. The heavens can't contain him, ha. let alone try to explain him. Yeah. Can't get him off your mind. Ha. And when he's on your mind, can't get him off your hands. Yeah. He's my king. Yeah. Always has been yeah. and always will be. Yeah. Can I preach a little bit? Yeah. He's my king. Yeah. And he has no successor. Uh -huh. He's my king. You can't impeach him and he ain't going to resign. He's my king. And if I were you, I'd get on the Lord's side. While there's time, there's victory on this side. There's victory on this side. The church said, victory is mine. Victory, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Why? It is mine. And if I were you, beloved, I'd get on the Lord's side. I'm through, but is there anybody here on the Lord's side this morning? Is there anybody here love the Lord this morning? Don't fool me now. Is there anybody here that love the Lord? Somebody say, right on. Cannot hinder thee. Let's give God some praise. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer as Reverend Tom comes to extend the invitation to salvation? Our Father and our God, we thank you. Thank you for the reminder of what you did on that great Palm Sunday. Thank you for coming to rescue humanity through salvation. Your death on the cross, your conquering of the grave, your being raised back to life. 
thank you for the demonstration of your power, of your love, and of your mercy. We've come now to make a decision, a decision to follow you as a new believer in God, or the decision to elevate you as a continuing disciple of God. Lord, convict the hearts and minds today. We really want to be worshipers that delight in your presence and that seek first your kingdom. Open their hearts and their eyes now in this moment of decision and we will give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Amen. As the daughters come and give you a verse of this one hymn, Pastor Tom will come after this first verse with the invitation to decision. Ponder these thoughts as the Lord ministers to you. decision time and I want to ask you a question whether you're here in person or whether you're online as you think about the message that our pastor preached this morning I want to ask you a question is he your king he can be my king he can be pastor's king he could be anybody else's king but in order for you to have eternal life he's got to be your king he's got to be your savior He's got to redeem you and save you from the separation from God that is caused by your sin. There's only one way to repair that relationship. It's not through worship. It's not through singing. It's not through reading of the word. And it's not through prayer. The only way to restore that relationship with God is to accept his gift. His gift of Jesus Christ as being your savior, as being the sacrifice that paid the price for your sin. We talked about it being Palm Sunday on this Sunday. The people were celebrating the power that Jesus had over death of other people. But the next Sunday is coming. And that's the Sunday where he went to the cross and he rolled, he actually it was Friday. He went to the cross, he died, he was buried, and on Sunday morning, he was risen from the dead, defeating death so that you can have a right relationship with God. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. All of us have made the mistake, and because of that sin, we're separated. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. God loves the entire world, all of the world, and he gave Jesus as that gift. So if you're here today, if you're online today, and you have never just received that gift, understood that that gift was to restore your relationship with God, to wash away your sin, if you've never understood that, made that decision before, now is the time. I want to invite you to ask Jesus into your heart to save you, to redeem you, to make him your king. So would you pray with me? Say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need my sin forgiven. I believe that you are the Son of God, 
that you paid the price for my sin. You died, you were buried, and you are risen from the dead. I believe you are alive today and that you are my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Family, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you invited him into your heart to save you from your sin, to restore that relationship with God and make him your king, I want to celebrate with you because today is a new day. It's a new birth and it's a new gift. If you're here today and you made that decision, I want you to raise your hand because we want to, amen. We want, we, want, we want somebody to come and to counsel with you, to talk with you and tell you about that great decision. Amen, my sister. We're so glad. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. If you're online today and you made that decision, send us a message. Let us know because we want to get in contact with you. We want to send you some information and, and let you know what God has in store for your life. Now, maybe you're saved. Maybe you're part of the eternal family of God because you've made that confession of faith and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, but you're not worshiping. You're not together with a local body of believers. You need to be engaged in the church. You need to be engaged with a, with a group of people who believe the same way. This is God's plan for us to do life together, Amen. to live under the same kingdom, yeah. to worship the same king, yeah. to know him, to love him, and to walk with him. Yeah. If you're here today, if you're online, and, and, and you're looking for a place to connect, I, I invite you to join us here at New Beginnings. If you want to be part of what we're doing and what God is doing in this earth through this church, let us know. We want to welcome you into the family. Again, we want to walk with you and do life with you and be with you. Is that you today? Is that you today? Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. And then finally, if there's something that convicted your heart in this message, you're saved, you're part of the church, but you said, maybe my worship isn't right. Maybe I'm singing the wrong song. Maybe I am not doing what God's called me to do. Something convicted you, and you just need prayer. Now it's prayer time. If, if something's on your heart, just raise your hand. I want, I want to know who I'm praying with today. Amen. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see. There's no shame. There's no shame here at all to say we need the Lord. Amen. Family, let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for the reminder that you came as an innocent child, that you lived that perfect and sinless life, and that you sacrificed yourself so that we could be saved. We thank you for the reminder in the word that God, sometimes we get it wrong, sometimes we lose focus, sometimes we have gone astray, but Lord, you are faithful. The gift of your love, of your sacrifice, and of eternal life, is it, 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 it remains with us because you hold it in your hands. So we pray today, God, that you would help us walk the way that you want us to walk, that you would help us to live the way you want us to live, that we would love the way that you would want us to love. And that's how you loved. That's how you lived. And that's how you walked. So, Father, help us, refresh us, renew us, revive us, restore us, oh God. Remind us, God, that, that we can have joy in our salvation, even in the difficulties of life. God, forgive us of the things that we've done. Forgive us of the times that we've turned our back. Forgive us, God. We come today and say, we need you. Guide us. Teach us and help us. Oh God, we need you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. And above all, God, we thank you for your gift. Lord Jesus, we love you today. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
Jesus Christ.